What's up guys, Jason here, back at it again with another video and for today's video guys, we will be unboxing the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite. But first, let me tell you a quick story. Mary and I were actually planning this around two weeks ago but Samsung released this silently on February 14, Valentine's Day. We were a bit late but I hope you guys will still watch my video. Honestly, if you only knew, this review would come in a lot sooner. I got this phone in an hour glow colorway which was similar to last year's Note 10. As you can see here, the Galaxy Note 10 Lite's box is similar to Samsung's Note 10 flagship boxes. It's all black, it's sleek, it's minimalist, and it feels very premium. The Note 10 Lite has only one variant here in the Philippines, which is the 8GB RAM and 128GB of internal storage, but the good thing is it's expandable up to 1TB. And also, there are other colors of this phone, the Aero Red and the Aero Black. And this phone costs 29,990 pesos, which is around half the price of their flagships. So we'll answer the question, is it really worth your 30,000 pesos? Upon opening the box, we'll find here another box which contains the SIM tool, and I'm pretty sure it contains the jelly case and the warranty cards. So we have the quick start guide, the warranty card, and the jelly case, and also, the SIM tool. Next up is the phone itself, which again, I got in an Aura Glow colorway, but let's set this aside for now. Underneath the phone, we find the earphones, which, good news guys, it has a 3.5mm headphone jack. Also, we have here the charging cable, which is again, good news. It has USB Type-C to Type-C, which means it's a fast charging device. And then, the power brick which is a 25 watt super fast charger and beneath all of those we have the smallest box here which contains the tool needed to replace your S Pen tips if ever it breaks. Now let's proceed with the phone. The Note 10 Lite may look like glass but it's actually plastic. Samsung calls this the glastic design. Same with the A series, the A71, A51 and all of those. My first impression when I touch the phone is it has curved edges unlike the boxy Note 10 or the Note 10 Plus. Unfortunately, glastic means that it's plastic and it doesn't have any sort of water resistance. Which is a downside, but when you think about it, you're paying 30,000 pesos, and of course, that means cost cutting for the device. It's a beautiful phone with a rainbow effect on the back, but unfortunately, all of those beauty means that it's a fingerprint magnet. On the right, you'll find here the volume rockers and the power button, which also functions as the Bixby button. On the left, you'll find here a hybrid SIM tray, which you can choose either dual SIM or a single SIM with expandable storage. At the top, You'll find here the antenna band and a microphone. At the bottom, you'll see a headphone jack, which is always nice to have, a USB Type-C port, a single firing bottom speaker, and of course, the S Pen. Now on to the display. It's a 6.7 Full HD Plus Super AMOLED Infinity O display that has 1080p resolution. Now unlike the flagship notes, the screen here is flat instead of curved. Now honestly, I like curved edges unlike Mary, which she loves flat edges. I don't know, to each his own. At the top, you'll see a 32 megapixel punch hole front camera, which is smaller than those of the flagship notes, which is a really nice touch. It's not as intrusive. Also, it has an under display fingerprint sensor, which is optical instead of ultrasonic. Now, it's not the fastest under display fingerprint sensor on smartphones, but it works every time. Now, on to the cameras it has a 12 megapixel main camera a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel telephoto camera. The next clip shows you a couple of pictures that I took to show you the quality of the photos. Now this phone has the Samsung Exynos 9810, which was also the chipset of the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. So it's a couple of years old, but it still performs well. Playing high-end games is not a problem, and multitasking is just a breeze. Again, the only variant of the Philippines is the 8GB RAM and the 128 gigs of internal storage, which is expandable up to 1TB. Now on to the reason why I think you guys should get this phone, the S Pen. The S Pen here is almost the same as the S Pen you can find on flagship notes. 
You could write notes while the screen is off, which is always handy. You could also use this as a remote shutter when you place your phone on a tripod and you need to take some pictures. But unlike the flagship notes, you can't do that Harry Potter thing because this has no gyro sensor. Now on to the battery. This phone has 4500 mAh battery capacity with 25 watts fast charging. Now I find it weird that the flagship notes has a lesser battery capacity than this phone. And I guess that's the reason why this phone is heavier than the Note 10 Plus. Now, the price. This phone costs 29,990 pesos, which I know is pricey, especially if we're gonna compare it to the A71, which also has the same specs, but without the S Pen, for only 23,000 pesos. So, are you really willing to pay an extra 7,000 for the S Pen? I will leave that question to you guys, comment down below. I really wanna know your opinion on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite. So that is it for my unboxing and early impressions of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Lite. Again, it's me, Jason. See you in the next one. Bye.